Redditors who are dating someone that went from I think I want to marry this person to I think I need a restraining order. What happened? We were actually engaged to be married. Then she went on holidays without me and came back pregnant. She then told me you have never done anything to prove you really love me. Accept this baby and help me raise it to prove it he declined and asked her to leave the home that I paid for and that was in my name. She refused. So I made arrangements. Cancelled my lease. Then left and told her there were 4 days left on the lease. I think. She wailed but what am I supposed to do? I don't have a job. He cut himself in front of me and threatened to stab my cat. WTF. Did he just start yelling I'll stab the cat? Pretty much. After being beat down mentally from her. I started suffering from erectile dysfunction at 22 years of age. Eventually I mustered the courage to leave her. She quickly moved on to someone else, who would later become her husband, and called me every week to basically rub it in. Saying how much better he was than me. How much bigger he was at me. Etc. Etc. I moved out of state. Changed my number. Never heard from her again. She called my parents and even showed up at their home. But they told her to go away. About 10 years later my friend ran into an old friend of hers. Apparently my ex got arrested for beating her own mother, got out of jail, and beat her husband, then tried to take their kids from him. She was arrested again, and later released. Guess I dodged a huge bullet there. You dodged a massive bullet. And I'm sorry you had to deal with all of her shit and what she caused you. I sort of feel like the Ed was your body's way of going. This chick. I just can't. I don't feel good with her, and I don't feel safe. It seems like a sign that she's not the right one for you. I'm glad it's over with her, and that you're free. I hope everything has gone back to how it ought to be for you, and that she ends up locked up somewhere. Jesus. Insanity. We met online. We both had video games in common, and hit it off. Fast forward 2 years and we get engaged. All was well. Until he started getting abusive toward me and our pets. I felt stuck, because I could t afford to live on my own. Then he went on a business trip, and I found child porn on a hidden flash drive. Turned it in. He got arrested. Turns out he was also hiring prostitutes and stuff. He's in prison and it's illegal for him to contact me. I graduated. She wanted to transfer schools. So, we moved to a college town, where she told me she'd been accepted as a transfer. Turns out she hadn't been accepted. And when she applied, was not accepted. She got a job at Walmart while trying to figure out her next move. After about 2 months she decides we should move to Pittsburgh. She's convinced this will solve all her problems and make her happy. Except we are in a recession and I just got my first good job. I don't want to move. She became abusive. I didn't want to go home. She was constantly negative and on the edge of a screaming fight. I was just avoiding her at the end. We were together 4 years before that. And she was always moody but not abusive. Six months of that. And she went to her hometown. To take a semester at a local school. And stay with her parents. I called her two weeks later. And told her not to come back. It had been like a weight was lifted from me. And I never wanted to see her again. I was young. Dumb. And thought I was in love. And ignored many red flags. As he got more comfortable around me. He let his crazy out. Someone stole his cell phone and he asked me to purchase a shotgun for him, so he could go shoot the person who did it. It took me another year and a half to leave. I did try breaking up with him, but he told me that if I ever tried to break up with him again he'd kill everyone I love, and then himself, so I'd know what it was like to be alone. That relationship ended in an order of protection against domestic violence. He was nuts. I moved my ex in way too early. She hated where she was living, and I wanted to help her with her mental state, so it seemed like a good idea at the time. She didn't have a job, so I paid for everything. Whenever she finally did get a job, she would keep all the money to herself, and then quit out of nowhere after a couple of weeks or so. Slowly but surely she started abusing me in pretty much every way, but sexual and like a frog in boiling water. I allowed it to happen, by justifying it to myself. I even found out that financial abuse is a thing. 
You know it's a great relationship when it teaches you about a new form of spousal abuse, she used her mental issues to manipulate me into buying her so many things. Including a fucking six or seven hundred dollar laptop. As soon as I ran out of money, we started having problems and sixteen dollars. Zero 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 in credit card debt later. She broke up with me and continued to live in my apartment for another couple of months. She was on the lease, so I couldn't kick her out cause legally, the apartment was her, just as much as it was mine. She finally moved out on my birthday, last December, and I'm still picking up the pieces. I dated someone for almost 3 years starting back in grade 10 in high school. Everything was great for the first year or so, and he treated me well, and we had some things in common. Didn't realize after we broke up how much of a great a neck beard he actually was thought for a while that, if we stayed together after high school, we could get married. Because he was my first relationship, and I felt like I loved him so much that I would marry him. Then about a year and a half into the relationship he starts to show his true colors. His family never had much money, so sometimes I would help to pay for stuff for him. He started to yell and scream if I didn't give him money to buy some game, food, etc. He wanted and many times would embarrass me in the middle of a public setting like Walmart. My parents sometimes too would help pay for his gas. And that got to the point where he would come to me to ask my parents for the money cause they didn't give it to him yet. I didn't want to give him money all the time and even tried calling him out in it. But he would always scream and yell. Saying how dare I tell him not to take my money blah blah blah. He generally became emotionally and financially abusive. I didn't know financial abuse was a thing until after we broke up. And the incident that made me really stop loving him was the night he raped me. He finally decided that waiting for me to be ready wasn't enough, so he took it. We still dated almost a year after that, but out of fear of what he would do if I left him. I finally left him the next year right before my birthday after finding out that he had cheated on me again with my now ex best friend. I wish I had said something sooner to my parents, but only told them 3 to 4 years after it happened. Now I hope I never see him again. Started dating this girl during my junior year of high school. We dated for about 7 to 8 months when she started becoming a huge flirt. I don't judge, but it's not something I could emotionally handle, so I called it off. I started getting closer to one of my best friends as she was a huge support during the breakup and eventually caught feelings. My ex did not like that. Late one night I see her flexing her dad's gun on her Instagram and in the comments saying I'll shoot the both of them. Went to the dean's office at school the next day and she got arrested and spent the night in jail. Actually did end up giving a no contact order. I was dating a guy who was very sweet in the beginning. After about 6 months he got possessive. He didn't trust me. An example of this was one night I told him I was meeting a friend I used to work with at a bar a block away. We lived in a safe area and it was a short walk. Her name sounded like it could be male or female. But I assured him she was a she. He showed up at the bar while we were there and it made him look very insecure. He began tracking my phone's GPS. I found out when I stopped at a relative's house after work on my way home and he freaked out and called my mom. She actually knew that was where I was and he had a hard time believing I wasn't cheating. The last straw was my first week at a new job. I worked nights and had my phone. I got this long winded ML regarding an innocent comment on a Facebook selfie of me. There were screenshots of it and a huge manifesto about why my buddies online all wanted to take me away from him. After I broke up with him, I got emails for months swinging between apologies and telling me I was the abuser. I got emails telling me he was being drugged. It was insane. Started dating in high school. Had some ups and downs. But at the time I just chalked it up to us being immature. My last two years of college really proved he just had serious issues. When I moved out of state for good it's like a switch flipped and he got extremely possessive and controlling. Wanted all my friends numbers. Gave me a schedule of when we need to be in communication. And if I missed any he was blowing my phone up with threats of suicide. Finally got the restraining order when he showed up to my friend's apartment looking for me. Threatening to call the police because I still had a pair of his shoes that I didn't even have. That's so crazy. 
something very similar happened to me, except I was the other side of it. Looking back it's insane to me how I could think the things I was doing were right. But I did them anyways. I'm not sure what happened in that relationship to bring that out of me. But I developed some serious hangups that I'm still working to get over today. This is about my sister. She and her ex dated on and off in high school. At some point in the 8th grade. He admitted he was in love with her and she admitted she had feelings for him. Too. So they started dating in 10th grade. I told her something was off about him. I'm not necessarily an intuitive person. I try my hardest not to judge a situation too quickly. But something about him just rubbed me the wrong way. They dated for about 6 months and he began showing signs of abusive behavior. Like others have stated. He began calling her and keeping tabs on her. He demanded to know when she made it home and when she went to sleep. He demanded that she edit her social media, MySpace, at this time, to include pictures of them and only them so everyone knew they were together. She visited me in the hospital. I had a severe stomach flu. Something wasn't right. And she told me she wanted to break up with him. She told me she was a bit scared of him. He was a big guy. Maybe 6 feet 4 inches. About 230 pounds. My mom begged her to end it with him and she did. The calls kept pouring in for about 2 weeks and she did her best to avoid him. Once I was back in school, I happened to catch an encounter between the two of them. He had her pinned against her locker telling her she wasn't leaving until they talked things out. I told him to back off and he threatened me. And then she threatened him. He stormed off. Punched a locker. Broke two of his fingers. He dropped it for a while. He popped up a few years later on the morning of my sister's wedding with a love letter. We are not sure how he knew she was getting married. We all had him blocked on social media. The letter was mailed to our home which she no longer lived in. He hasn't come around anymore. But honestly, I would not put it past him. My sister's husband is an avid hunter. So that may be what's keeping him away. I'll throw my hat into the ring here. Dated a chick years ago. She was essentially everything I thought I wanted in a girl. She was cute. Funny. Liked just enough things I liked for us to have common interests, but just different enough to show each other new things and experiences I was heavy into her, and she was heavy in too. Then things got. Weird. She started getting jealous of high school friends I'd known way before her, and even went as far as telling me I wasn't allowed to hang out with some of my female friends except for the few she thought were uglier than her. Things got worse. She started getting jealous of inanimate objects like my game consoles and video games. Some of which she gave me. It came to a head when my grandmother asked me to watch her dog. She was a tiny hand dog that I adored and one day I was half asleep and saw her literally kick this tiny dog off my bed. Like with her feet. I asked her what the hell her problem was and she told me that she doesn't like that I give the dog more attention than her. Things got even worse. She would physically abuse me when I did things she didn't like such as bending my fingers, hitting me in the face, etc. Eventually everything I did she didn't like. After a while I got the courage to dump her ass and she tries to tell me she's pregnant to keep me which is an obvious lie. After that I discovered she'd still stalk my Facebook page and told some of her friends and mutual friends that I was the abuser. I also learned that when I was away she let dudes feel her up and other stuff too. Luckily I've landed a great girl that cares about me and isn't a jealous psycho like she was. I was dating a guy. I really liked him. He was smart, funny, and adventurous. We were getting pretty serious. He pretty much lived at my house. One weekend I went home for my dad's birthday. All of my brothers were home. I have five of them. We ate drank and were merry. One of my sister-in-laws took some pictures and posted them on Facebook with me tagged in them. Got back to my house Sunday evening and my boyfriend was coming over shorty to hang out slash spend the night. When he got there he was basically frothing at the mouth. He shoved me and called me a whore. Started pushing me around ranting about how he had to see me whoring myself all over the internet and hanging on a bunch of guys. I told him they were my brothers. But at that point I was done with him. I told him to get the fuck out of my house. He took that as an invitation to throw me up against a wall and try to force me to kiss him. 
My roomie heard the commotion and came out of her room with a bat. Then shithead made the only good decision he made that day and decided to leave. Kicked in a pantry door and wrecked some drywall on his way out though. I threw all his stuff in a dumpster. He ended up stalking me for years. Showing up drunk at places I'd moved to after we dated. Calling after I'd changed my number. Even texted me on the week of my wedding to ask me to reconsider marrying him instead. Yeah you crazy fuck I want to dump the love of my life for a crazy stalker. Jesus Christ hope that man leaves you alone. Started dating not long after a previous relationship. At first everything was amazing. And I did everything for this girl. For my 21st birthday we went to Elton Towers with two of my friends. One boy and one girl. We stayed over at the hotel. We were all in the same room, having a drink and a laugh when suddenly my gf storms out the room for no reason. Rightly so I follow her back to our room as to ask what's up. Before I can even finish my sentence she punches me square in the face. Gets me to the floor and kicks me about 5 6 times. I ask why and it's because I'm apparently always looking at my girl friend. Anyway in the morning we set off home and I assume all is well. We drop my friends off, and as I pull up to her house she puts her feet on my windscreen and kicks it three quarters times. Cracking it. Not sure why I stayed with her for a month after this as she scratched at my face repeatedly when I accepted an old school friend on Facebook. I started dating this amazing girl, but she was just getting out of an abusive marriage, and I was her first female partner. She started showing up at my work with flowers and coffee, which was sweet. But I had never told her where my office was. Then. She started showing up at my house at all hours. And would get upset when I needed to sleep. I work grades. She then wanted me to meet her daughters. Which I wasn't comfortable with. Because we were in the first stages of a relationship. I decided to break it off. She was too needy. Which was understandable coming from someone who had just left an abusive relationship and discovered their sexuality. But I wasn't the person that could guide her. She decided that I was just afraid of love and started leaving books of poetry on my porch and leaving long letters in my mailbox. I finally had to call law enforcement after I came home to her in my bed. She had taken a ladder to my second story room window. I lived with roommates and broken in. I found her naked in my bed, covered in blood from cutting herself. She proceeded to tell me that I was the only thing keeping her alive. I cut off all contact, but I truly hope that she has gotten some help and is doing well. She was a wonderful woman, but so, so broken. My relationship with my ex in uni seemed really great. He loved me a lot, was super attentive. I even went on holiday with his family, and at some point I thought we'd eventually marry and start a family. Long story short, when I got busy with school, final year, and didn't see him as often, he stated getting clingy and jealous of everyone, including my female friends. I tried to break up with him probably three times before he accepted it, explained how I wanted to focus on my studies and the situation wasn't good for either of us. The last time he seemed to understand my point and we remained friends. This also didn't last long. And he eventuality stared stalking me online and in person and constantly bothering my friends. He managed to go to my senior year party, even though he wasn't in my year. Eventually he texted me calling me a whore. That I had cheated on him. You name it. He also told this to all our mutual friends in uni. So that was fun. He acted like a total lunatic begging for me to reconsider a friendship after that. But obviously there was no chance for that. The last straw was him showing up at the graduation ceremony making it awkward for me and all my family. Started dating a woman who agreed with me on the idea of being childless. I was 100% certain. And still am. Almost 25 years later. That I did not and do not want children. We commenced dating. Two months into dating, she told me that I had to one, quit my job that paid very well and get an even higher paying job immediately, if not sooner semicolon, two, point, that I had to purchase her a large house in Connecticut, at the time she was living in Queens, New York and I was living in southern Westchester County, and finally semicolon, three, point, I had to get her pregnant immediately with the first of ten, yes. 
10. Children she wanted by me. No she was not kidding. At all. I think I invented ghosting in that moment. It was. After all. 1994. How hard did I ghost her? I moved from New York to as overnight. I vanished. We are FB friends now. Though. My former girlfriend and I met in 2014. And we spent several years together. We fell in love very quickly. And we were like two peas in a pod. She had two children. And I had a son from my previous marriage. The three kids all got along great together. And looked forward to seeing each other. For the first three years. She treated my son better than my ex-wife did. In 2016. After two years. We found out we were going to have a child together. Since she was the best mother I had seen in my adult years. I could not have been happier. She was taking a medication called Topiramat when I met her, which she said was for her migraine headaches. She had to get off of the medication when she was pregnant, and while she was breastfeeding, I noticed that while she was off the medication, she didn't have a single migraine headache, not one. In hindsight, I surmise that the lack of lack of medication contributed to this. There was a noticeable difference in her personality after she stopped breastfeeding our daughter. In 2017, while our daughter was less than a year old, she had several episodes, I don't know how else to describe them, where she would act completely bizarre. She would tell my parents in person that I don't pay for the house, the bills, the groceries, and I would physically strike her, things that were patently false. She abandoned my son at home by himself at age 7 while she took her own children out shopping. She tried to serve my son and I raw chicken for dinner, and then left the house sobbing when I tried to put the chicken back in the oven for a few more minutes to let it cook. At the end of 2017, she tried to get me arrested for a DUI at my own house while coming home from a social function that we were both at. She called the police to tell them that I raped her after a night of her seducing me in our own bed. Finally, she succeeded in getting me arrested for an assault that didn't happen with bruises that she made up. The protective order she filed against me was dismissed in court, a rarity, and the criminal assault charge she brought against me wasn't even taken up by the prosecutors. I'm pretty sure it was bipolar disorder than she was masking from me, since we had met. I have read that a pyramid can sometimes be prescribed to treat bipolar disorder, as opposed to other more traditional prescriptions. It's taken me almost two years to finally process everything that happened. But the girl that I thought I was going to marry turned into the person who tried to put me in prison for a long time. As for the child we had together, she succeeded in keeping our daughter, now age 3, away from me for 5 months. Thankfully she now gets to stay with me for on alternating weekends and on Tuesdays, 